What's up everyone? This will be an interesting video for all the entomologists that want to study silk moths in Asia, especially in Indochina. What I'm holding here is an intact cocoon of an Ampheria species. I do not know what species yet, but in the region we can expect to find species like Anterea milleta or Anterea larissoides, which have been reported in Cambodia before. Now here we have their food plant. And one thing that many, many tropical anthereas feed on is Dipterocarpus, or any type of di Dipterocarpus, Sea, which is a family of trees. Now, if you want to look for um, cocoons, you'll notice that some of them are quite noticeable here. Here we have an old empty cocoon hanging here from a silk thread. This one's empty, so we can discard the empty case. But this one here, that I found earlier, is definitely still alive. So we're gonna put that one apart. It's, uh, we're gonna create this one for breeding, for my breeding program in uh, Cambodia. And what's interesting is, if we look around here, we see many, many dipterocarp trees, okay? There are many of these, and I've inspected them all, but and none of them have cocoons except this tree. And why is this, you ask? Well, that's because um, Saturnids, they, tend to breed and stay on the same tree for generations. And the main reason for this is that females are very apathic, they do not fly much, and usually hatch straight on their host plant after emerging from their cocoons. And the males, the males that do fly and locate the females, basically fly between these populations in order to breed and pair. So, now I'm attempting to climb up a ladder Hope that goes well. And well, here we have one example of a cocoon. This one is empty, but you'll see that it's resting on a dead leaf. And the reason is because before the caterpillars pupate, they chew a part of the stem of the leaf that they wish to spin a cocoon upon. So the leaf dies and dries out completely. However, they chew it in such a way that it still remains intact and part of the tree. As you can see this uh, silk moth made its own silk attachment here to the stem. And while well, this one is already open, it's uh, probably emerged before. But this is one example of how you can feed, uh, find many cocoons on one tree. It's basically the same family spawning for multiple generations. Yeah. I think if we check some of these, they're, they're usually in the dead leaves, see? That, that is one inside see? us. There's yeah. See, there's one inside also. If you and this one also inside us. Okay, I need a ladder. Okay, so I'm standing here on a ladder. Here inside the dipterocarp tree, you will once again notice the dead leaf. But hidden behind it is where the anteria spin up. So if you want to find them, you just have to track the dead leaves. All right, I removed the dead leaf, and here you see the cocoon inside. I will take it off. And there we go. Here, Pam, I have the cocoon for you. You want it? Yeah. Three, two, one. Whee! Oh, too bad. All the cocoons we collected so far, but there are many more, I'm quite sure. Hi everyone, and thanks for watching. My name is Bart Coppens, a traveling entomologist from the Netherlands. Working with moths used to be my hobby, but thanks to my exposure on YouTube and social media, it became my job. Thank you for following my travels in Laos and Cambodia, which is part of the video series that you're watching now. This is the outro video, so skip ahead to the next episode if you like. I would just like to remind all of you to like and subscribe, and consider joining my crowdfunding platform. Because as, as an independent entomologist, crowdfunding enables me to do independent work on insects and improve my YouTube channel. So if you are willing and able, 
please consider joining. And otherwise, I would like to say thanks for watching. And stay tuned for more insects and moths. Bye.